Chief Commissioner, honored guests, ladies and gentlemen. About a year and a half ago, my mom asked me if I would speak to all of you about something very hard for me to talk about. At first, I hesitated, but only for a moment because I understood and have witnessed firsthand the importance of supporting victims of crime. I came to this gala last year as a volunteer and realized that this was one way of making something good come out of something horrible. Besides, when you're young, you feel like you don't have a voice. So I guess I should say, thank you for giving me the chance to share mine and speak for all the young people who, like me, have been affected by crime. The truth is, some of you are a little intimidating, not just because I'm 15, because I know you, th the power you have to make a difference. If only I had the ability to improve the lives of someone else just by coming to an event like this. On January 1st, 2008, when I was just six years old, I got the worst news of my life. My mom came into my room. She had been crying, but was doing her best not to. She sat on the edge of my bed and somehow found the strength to tell me that my older sister had gone to heaven because she'd been attacked by someone with a knife and had died. I couldn't believe it, and I didn't understand how could this be. I had just seen her a couple hours before she went to her friend's house. I had so many unanswered questions, but I knew one thing. Life was different, and nothing would ever be the same. My mom did her best to answer my questions and to reassure me that I was safe and loved, and nothing would change that. But it had changed, and when I went back to bed that night, I was both very sad and terrified. I felt somehow as though I were free falling into a bottomless pit. For a long time, my nights were full of nightmares. My mom had promised to keep me safe, but she hadn't kept my sister safe. So what did that actually mean? When I eventually asked her, I knew somehow that I had just made things worse, and even harder for her, even though she tried to hide it. I knew she was heartbroken, and I didn't know what to do or say. There's a lot of responsibility for a six-year-old. As the days went by, I saw the struggle to normalize our lives. I remember going to school and seeing the other parents not speaking to my mom. The usual morning conversations as we lined up for kindergarten weren't happening, even though my mom tried to smile and act naturally. I felt really angry about that. I also felt different than other kids at school and found myself pulling back into a shell. My mom tried to explain to me that people weren't trying to be mean to us. They just didn't know what to say. They were really scared that they would say or do something that would make it all worse and, or make us cry or get angry. A few years later, my mom was taking a course on moving from post-traumatic stress into post-traumatic growth. And one of the things she had to do was write an e-book on something to do with her experiences as a victim. She decided to write a book of advice to friends and families of people who were grieving. She explained to people that they didn't need to say anything, they just needed to be there, and gave lots of advice on how to help in practical ways that really made life easier for the victim. I've often been told that I'm a grown-up in a kid's body. Sometimes I want to scream back and tell people that my childhood was stolen from me and I had to grow up too fast, but what good would it do? As the months and then years went by, I had a better understanding of what had happened and the effort it took my parents to support us in our young lives. I had a 12-year-old and a two-and-a-half-year-old brother at the time. My older brother had some very dark times. One day at school, he had a psychotic breakdown which terrified everyone. He saw things that weren't real and thought that he was going to die and physically acted them out without being conscious of it. His teacher didn't know what to do and neither did my mom. He also didn't hang with his friends anymore. He said they were childish. We turned inward as a family, and maybe that was a good thing. A good thing because I had a good family. One day when the front page of a newspaper had a picture of my sister and the girl who killed her, someone brought it to school. Apparently their parents thought I might want to see it. Well, I hadn't seen it, and on the bus ride home, everyone was asking my brother and I what had happened, and for some reason they seemed to think the whole thing was funny, and that really hurt. I didn't want my mom to know because I felt like I needed to protect her. Truth was, she was protecting us from the media, and when she found out, it made her really angry. Things like this would happen too often, and each time it made the hurt worse, just when things were starting to get better. It also brought back the fear. It was bad for me, but so much worse for my older brother. A few months ago, three of my friends were robbed at knife point. I think it affected me worse than them. I so easily could have been with them that afternoon, and I don't know how I would have reacted. I thought about that a thousand times. Thank goodness I could go home and talk to my parents. 
I was so lucky to have been born into the family that I have. They taught us not to be afraid, to ask for help, and they knew where to go for that help. And so we learned how to look forward instead of living in the past. There are families who aren't as fortunate. Maybe they are marginalized or lacking the skills and support to get through each day. Trauma takes over your brain and your ability to think properly. <laughs> victim services Toronto is a lifeline. With their help, victims can get through each day and eventually those days turn into months and then years. They support families and then the parents have more strength to help the kids. If my parents had fallen apart or split up, I don't know where I would be today. Did you know that when a child is a victim of homicide, many times those parents end up living apart? I know that parents split up quite often these days, and most kids are fine as long as it's handled well. But at the time, I think it would have made my brothers and I feel really, really helpless and scared. There are kids I know who are lost. They've had bad stuff happen to them and can't seem to get it together. I worry about them and, them and I care about the impact their actions have on others. They, if they don't get the help, they will just keep getting worse and someone will get hurt. What if them hurts someone else I love? You have the power to make a difference. You're so lucky. Not only will others listen to you, but they will take what you have to say seriously. I know everybody has their own problems, but you're still smart, successful, kind, and generous people. And I know that because you're here. Please stretch beyond your comfort level and give as much as you can to help kids like me. The thing is, you never know when you or someone you, might, you know might need help. Both my parents were police officers and never ever thought that their daughter would be murdered. The support my family, my family received has given us all the strength to pay it forward. This is my first step. On behalf of my sister Stephanie and all the other victims, thank you for allowing me to feel as if I'm making a difference through you until I have the means to do it myself. Thank you.